Hello. We have brought. I think this can I do just a question. So after you just text me WhatsApp me. Okay. Ah, that's all right. Okay. So you can see now we are live. Check it out. Coordinating across the states, and our CM was not here, so it's completely on me to handle it entirely. He's traveling, so good experience for you, and I'm sure you. Ah, yeah, yeah, of course. The only thing is I'm pregnant, so oh god, so much of labor and the progesterone is taking me. I'm just putting you on speaker. Okay, you just have a go. Huh? Okay, okay, okay. So you are just brief about these with the topics, right? Okay. 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 Hello? Just another two minutes. Sure. We'll just brief about we'll just give it a big start and then we'll take it up. So how long have you been working with me? Six years. All right. So you really started it, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Initially as a marketing yes. So what all do you do now? I'm into brand alliances, activations, fan India. I handle the entire uh, fan India brand alliances with partners like Johnson Johnson, Eco, and all that. So I'm more into that and the activations one, the ATF, BTO, marketing. Pure hardcore marketing. And uh, so you work with Ishan? I handle his marketing. So he's a head of our business, you know, which is Baby Shield. So I take care for the Baby Shield marketing, anything advertising, marketing, whatever the fan India. So I take care for both, baby cord as well, umbilical cord. And, and what's the connection between the two companies, baby shield and that's, it's, it's a brand, uh, it's a product of one company only, so there's no such difference as a company per se. So it's licensed two products, which is umbilical cord stem cell banking and newborn skin. Who owns life cell? Mr. Mayur Abhi. And we have uh, obviously the board as well. Yeah, sure. Do you want me to? Just give a brief about the topic. Okay. Uh, hi, um, uh, good, uh, good afternoon. This is Dr. Sibyl here, Group Medical Director and uh, Senior Pediatrician of Bolo Hospitals. And we're going to be talking about different aspects of parenting. And we can take questions on, on both uh, physical issues. We can talk about mental issues. We can talk about parenting per se. I've recently written a book called uh, Is Your Child Ready to Face the World? And that really talks about how to 
uh, really excel at parenting given the kind of challenges that we face uh, these days uh, with, with kids having no time for us and uh, really how the parenting techniques need to adapt to the changing society that we live in. So I'm waiting for any questions that you you might have, uh, and and this can uh, vary from uh, dealing with babies to toddlers to the preteens, uh, teenagers, and of course, dealing with teenagers is really really tough, and uh, most of us struggle when it comes to uh, you know developing a communication strategy with teenagers with with really setting a bond with them. Hi Pratima. Do you, do you have any any questions you want to raise? Somebody asked about the book. Uh, well, this book is really based on uh, what I've learned as a pediatrician over the last uh, 20 years, and uh, you know what I've learned looking at uh, friends, is their kids, relatives, and of course observing kids. I have looked after as a pediatrician, and uh, based on that, I really uh, developed a technique of communicating uh, with our son, which really is the subject matter of the book. So it's really about instilling values and how do you instill values in children when uh, when they don't really want to have that discussion with you. So how do you actually communicate with them and actually teach them without them uh, believing that you're teaching them. So it really has to be about a two-way communication. It's about, uh, about being able to engage with them without sermonizing, without trying to uh, say in my experience, because kids really don't like that. Uh, what what they are interested in is uh, uh, learning about what interests them rather than what the parent is interested in. So what we did with our uh, with our son was really uh, find uh, 15 minutes of undivided time, and this was something that uh, we tried to do every week, and it was uh, uh, the time that he chose, uh, and uh, we would talk about an incident, we talk about something that was either bothering him or was something that he was interested in. And then one would weave a story around it, and uh, one would uh, then uh, try and, and instill a value in that story, and and do this in a manner that it didn't look like uh, it was a lecture or it was uh, trying to uh, teach him. To give you an example, when we um, had this discussion about an iPhone, and then Devang uh, uh, said that he wants an iPhone, and as uh, you you know that whenever a new uh, gadget comes in and, and Kids, especially teenagers, are very, very interested in. They want that gadget, so Devang started making a case for, "I want an iPhone. It's a wonderful gadget. It'll you know make me super smart. I'll be able to answer so many questions." I thought, well, this is a perfect opportunity for us to talk about Steve Jobs' life and really talk about uh, the highs and lows in his life. And what a wonderful examination! What a wonderful case, really, of determination. How to rise once you've fallen. Imagine creating a company in your 20s, making it a company worth $2 billion with more millionaires than uh, ever known in history, being thrown out of that company and being brought back 10 years later to head that company uh, and uh, make it the most valuable company. So there couldn't perhaps be a better example of, of, uh, of determination and how you can learn and improve in life. So we've got um, 
a question about uh, you know products uh, that sometimes uh, get into the news for being banned and this happens from time to time it's it's true about medication it's true about cough syrups it's true about cosmetics it, it's true about uh, uh, food products as well and we've seen that from time to time with different companies so it really depends on uh, you know what the evidence was for that ban is that ban limited to a particular location a particular geography meeting some of the criteria that the authorities might want uh, to be satisfied uh, and and then uh, revoking the ban so there isn't really a blanket kind of uh, you know uh, opinion or or advice that a pediatrician can really offer so one really has to look at the merits of each case and then uh, make a qualified decision uh, and and sometimes when uh, you know products get banned then the ban gets lifted pretty pretty soon as well and we've seen that happen over and over again So we got another question uh, coming up and my daughter is 6 year old any specific advice on vitamins because everybody thinks she's too thin for her age and this is from minakshi so minakshi basically uh, some amount of vitamins are needed what we are seeing uh, quite often in in our environment even though we live in a country where there's a lot of sunshine is vitamin d deficiency so most of us tend to prescribe a vitamin d supplement depending on uh, the dietary habits of the child uh, we provide uh, usually for some amount of supplements and those supplements can be vitamin b it could be vitamin c uh, it could also be iron folic acid it could be trace elements so it really varies uh, from child to child but more important than supplements is for the child to be able to uh, really get into a routine which a child eats a balanced diet where the child eats a mix of proteins carbohydrate fat and of course a fair mix of vegetables uh, so that one is able to get a lot of uh, trace elements and and uh, but also a fair amount of water and i know what i've just said is easier said than done kids don't really comply with what you want them to do when it comes to eating but it's something that one needs to really look at very positively and encourage children you can't really force children uh, in terms of uh, changing their eating habits or for that matter forcing a particular type of food uh, into the system it works initially it works for a while but then uh, the children really uh, back off and it becomes very hard really to uh, repeatedly uh, give what you want to give so it's best to have a conversation with the child and encourage healthy eating habits and quite often it's very important for parents really to eat right because if they don't eat right uh, children are really not going to follow advice that's just offered when they see the, um, that that advice uh, not being followed at home uh, we got a question from pooja how important is vitamin d supplementation for kids below 5 years so vitamin d has a very important role in in healthcare and um, and uh, this is a, a vitamin that has been studied quite extensively now and uh, uh, vitamin d e deficiency has been found uh, relatively common in our population so we do recommend vitamin d e supplements and uh, and and, and uh, it's an easy enough supplement to to give uh, it doesn't really have to be taken every day uh, it could even be taken uh, once a week once a month depending on what the vitamin d e status is for the child and also depending on whether there is any uh, deficiency which manifests itself with uh, specific symptoms and and, and signs how many hours of sleep is required for a toddler 2 to 3 years and this is from anita uh, interesting uh, question when a baby is born uh, the baby really sleeps for something like 18 to 20 hours a day so they feed and then they and then they uh, sleep the feed and the sleep so as the child gets older the child gets involved in other activities sort of is interested in in uh, playing and doing other things as well so the amount of uh, hours that the child sleeps decreases so for a toddler you know 14 15 hours 16 hours of sleep uh, is is quite common but as the child gets older this then becomes 12 hours and becomes 10 
but we would uh, definitely want children in the growing age uh, to uh, to uh, sleep for about eight hours at a minimum uh, and we also know that the release of the growth hormone happens uh, during sleep so it has a benefit not just for resting the child but also for for the growth of the child so it's important to encourage children to sleep well what we are seeing uh, increasingly often these days is that children sleep late and the sleep is interrupted and that's what because there is a lot of stimulation before um, the child goes to bed which means that they're watching video games or they're playing on the computer and that's something that we don't want to encourage we want children to uh, to sleep uh, in, in, a, in an environment which is relaxed so this means that they should be involved in too many activities before before they go to bed so an early dinner and then perhaps a story should be read to them or they should read themselves and then try and go to bed rather than do this after watching exciting programs on, on television uh, how good are supplements there are many many supplements available and uh, supplements have an important role to play if we believe that the diet uh, that we want is uh, a child to have is, is not complete uh, and uh, there are subtle differences in the different commercial preparations available and uh, one really uh, needs to make this choice based on what the needs of the child might be which perhaps could be best uh, discussed with a pediatrician or sometimes it also depends on what the child likes there are, there are differences in terms of taste preferences and also there are several different flavors available so uh, one would sometimes uh, give the child an option of one flavor if he doesn't like that move on to another flavor uh, so it, it really is about uh, the child being happy with taking the supplement. If the child is not happy taking the supplement, then it's not going to work. And the child's uh, after a while going to say, I don't want the supplement. So it's best to involve the child in, in choosing the supplement. Incidentally, this question was from Chetan. So my child gets allergic rashes almost every week. We are seeing a general physician. How can we improve the care of the baby? And this is from Prashant. Uh, Prashant, some children uh, have a tendency towards uh, allergy. Uh, allergy could manifest itself with a running nose, watering of the eyes, or uh, skin allergy as is happening with your child. Or it could 